Not everyone has knuckle-melting competitive esports aspirations. Some just want to sit by themselves and level up by kicking a refrigerator in the face. Hey, it's Alex, and I've had a chance to play through all of Street Fighter VI's World Tour mode, which is its fighter campaign meets semi-open world RPG, with a dash of classic beat-em-up. But for the not-so-competitive single-player heads out there, is Street Fighter VI worth grabbing exclusively just for its solo offerings? Well, straight up, unless you're a Street Fighter Pro, you can anticipate a bare minimum of around 10 hours if you just beeline rush right through World Tour mode. Expect quite a bit more though, around 20 plus hours, if you do all the side quests, minigames, and max out the bonds with all of the main characters. The advantage of doing that is that you unlock more of their associated special attacks so you can further build out the most ridiculous Street Fighter character combo that would completely implode the balance if unleashed online. This mixing, matching, and gathering of your absolute favorite moves across all the core characters is like gotta catch em all fists edition. At this given moment, I have Kami's core moveset and her spiral arrow kick, but also E Honda's sumo headbutt, Blanca's electric thunder, Chun Li's spinning bird kick, and Ken's Shoryuken. As long as the inputs don't overlap, you can build any hybrid character you can dream of. The more you use the basic moveset or specials of a specific character, or if you directly give them gifts, the more your bond with them will rise then they'll be willing to extend your training, giving you character-specific quests, pass on more of their special attacks, and you can even call them in for a master assist to help you out during a fight. This is the greatest strength of World Tour, the ability to create the ultimate mutant fighter that can go right up to any innocent civilians or sentient household appliance and decimate them in mortal combat, with a C. World Tour mode starts off a little bit on the easy side, not giving you all the fun tools to play around with until the end of Chapter 6. That's just an hour or three in, depending on how you play. Right around then, you get access to the new Overdrive, Drive Rush, Drive Parry, Drive Impact, and Drive Reversal mechanics. These new defensive and offensive options are great new additions to the fighting system that you begin to appreciate more over time. Higher level and more aggressive enemies will start making an appearance around Chapter 6 onward, and some of them can easily wreck you, again, not counting pro players. When this slight pushback from the AI starts to happen, it'll make you start paying attention to your consumable item buffs on hand, healing, and gear your character has equipped. Luckily, the gear system expands around this time as well, giving you a wider range of options, more gear with bonus modifiers, and the ability to enhance the level of gear. You do this by force-feeding certain materials into your clothes, or by sacrificing pieces of gear you don't want or need. If you prefer min-maxing the statistically best but most awkward-looking gear, you do have the ability to dye them and apply different cosmetic appearances over pieces. Here I opted to just look like Squishy Blanca, and no one can avoid my snuggles. If you want to focus on extorting as much gear and zenny as you can from the NPCs, make sure you're checking their bonus objectives before or during a fight. If you satisfy the conditions of those, you might just come out with a sick windbreaker. Other than statistically better gear, there's also your character's skill trees that further modify your stats. The five skill trees force you to make this one or this one type of decisions as you unlock each quadrant. This can be fully reset though if you totally gunk it up. If you feel like you're being pulled into combat a little too often for your liking, there is a skill in here which lets you slow down time to avoid those more aggressive enemies. As you work your way through World Tour, it does a really great job at explaining not only the basics and more advanced mechanics, but also the hidden gears operating them behind the scenes. Many things are passively training you to be better, masked behind something like a little mini-game you thought you were just doing for experience points and zenny. Turns out you are also learning the nuances of frame-perfect defense timing, haha! <laughs> 
There's a few mini games spread out all around the city like this that are fun yet informative, while others are just silly or optional time sinks. Speaking of the city, there are two primary open areas to explore, being Metro City and Old Nichelle. Every single one of the other areas on the world map screen are not full-fledged places you can really explore like those other two though. They have fixed camera angles so you can't rotate the screen, and they function more like just micro areas for some of the main characters to hang out in. The two main regions have some light exploration with chests to find, collectibles to grab, minigames, vendors, and side quests, but mostly, they're piles of casually aggressive pedestrians waiting for a brawl. Some characters and quests will only be available during certain times of day, and you can quickly swap between night and day back at your home. Nighttime is generally more dangerous, with higher level and grumpier enemies out there. The master actions you can use outside of battle have a few uses, like spanning some gaps with Chun-Li's spinning move, but for the most part you'll use these for breaking open objects or to snag things out of the air. They also give you a slight advantage if you initiate combat with one. Anytime during the campaign, if you have a thousand zenny to spare, you can completely remake your character. So if all of a sudden you decided that canonically your character has done leg day for four decades straight, you can quickly adjust your body attributes accordingly. Now my legs are the true hero of the story. The narrative throughout this campaign and overall tone of Street Fighter VI is pretty over the top at all times, not taking itself too seriously, like a big Street Fighter themed cartoon. A few times throughout the story, you'll be entered into tournament style matches, and it's a nice touch that the built-in commentator feature kicks in for these, making you at least feel like your skills are epic, even if maybe they're not. That's a counter! This can lead to some big damage! How did they read that throw? Hit that with confidence! So that's the basic overview, but now for my review. Is World Tour worth the price of admission alone? Obviously, the ideal situation is that you go into Street Fighter VI to play a bit of everything multiplayer and single player. But if you're only interested in the single player-ness, I'm gonna say, yes, worth it. Even at full price, just the solo offerings, you get your money's worth. About 10 to 20 plus hours out of World Tour mode, and then there's also the arcade mode to work through with all of the main characters. That adds a bit of extra backstory for them, and is more of the raw Street Fighter experience. And perhaps after all that purely single player stuff, you'll accidentally get skilled enough so that you feel like it's possible to stand your ground online. Maybe. Traditional fighting games are totally my one Achilles heel genre. I'm garbage tier but going through the World Tour mode did make it feel like I at least improved to a slightly better recycling tier. Now if you've already gotten your hands on with Street Fighter VI, let me know how you think it compares to the previous entries, specifically 4 and 5, and also your thoughts on the competitive multiplayer component this time around. As always, I'm Alex, thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you next time.